Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another All Play. This time it's really unique. I am here with Ryan Bunadara, nonetheless, the Ryan Cinematic Universe. Hey man, how you doing today? Doing great. Yeah? What are we here for today? Oh, we're going to talk about this this uh, indie game. The little game. Yeah, this little game. By a little development studio. Yes. Yes. Called Metal Gear. But amazingly, it's had like a 30-year lifespan at this point. Yes, so somehow. can't be that small, right? Eh, pretty small. Um, yeah, we're... Uh, we're pretty big fans of this series. Um, myself, I've, well, just to make a long story short, it's basically influenced my life in terms of how I think about things, how I process things, how I intellectually dive into and dissect a problem or look at something from a global perspective. Um, the game series basically changed my life. I started playing when I was about 11, 10 or 11 years old, played Metal Gear Solid for the first time, and I'm sure like everybody else, it did the same exact thing. I don't know about you, but I definitely, yeah, I'll elaborate a little bit. No, that's uh, exactly my same, like, jumping on point with Metal Gear Solid 1, and then going back and exploring the earlier games, too. Yeah. So, today's discussion is going to be a little bit of Metal Gear, a little bit of Hideo Kojima, and a lot about lore, a lot about what's happening with um, Kojima, Konami, Metal Gear as a franchise, Death Stranding, PT, Metal Gear Survive, all it kind of balled into one. And we're kind of going to elaborate on what we feel, how we think, and where we think the series is going to go. And if Kojima actually has any interest in making a Metal Gear Solid game ever again. We will see. We will see. So, for you, what's one of the biggest like standout things? Like, What, what draws you <laughs> into this series? Oh, man. Uh... It's tough to say. I think uh, it, just jumping into one Metal Gear game, I think you can immediately see that Kojima has an innate like love for, for action movies and, and cinematography and things like that. And right. he bleeds that over into the world of video games that I think, even till this point, there are not a lot of other games that have replicated that. Uh, God of War is a great example, but that is one game. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's like uh, The Last of Us is a great example, but that's one game, and this right. guy has been doing it kind of forever yeah. and with each iteration. Kind of pushes that envelope forward um and yeah as a big fan of like cinematography and cinema in general uh, that's what drew me in and on top of that you add in a lot of just very satisfying things to have in video games and to carry them forward like just a bunch of machismo action yep. espionage great music and great writing um some cheesy dialogue but that comes with the territory of action cinema and uh that's kind of grown over time as well yeah like you you summed it up perfectly it's it's Everything you kind of want in a medium, um, it's an action movie. It's a good story. It's a fleshing out of different ideas and, and, and concepts that may be, in a sense, taboo, may be, in a sense, a little bit questionable. But I think that's the intriguing nature behind the entire series as a whole. And for me personally, um, I hope it doesn't stop. I know Kojima is probably... <laughs> both mentally and physically done with Metal Gear Solid, um, or at least Metal Gear in some regard. Um, we're going to talk more about the Konami situation, yeah. yeah, the situation, and all of that here in a moment. But I think as a whole, for me personally, it's one of those IPs that will ultimately shape how I outlook the rest of my life, and it already has to a big degree. Um, but yeah, I think now it's, it's kind of... It's kind of interesting rolling into 2018, knowing that we have this awesome Death Stranding game coming here. Maybe, hopefully, sooner rather than later. Kojima, can, you know, he promised it before the 2019 Olympics or whatever it is. So we'll, we'll see. Yeah, um, I think optimistically, I was thinking 2020. Yeah. Um, Maybe with the release of a new console or something like that. Yeah, I, I think that would be great to start off a new console. Yeah. Um, it's it's anyone's guess what which would come out first. That game. Kingdom Hearts 3 or Final Fantasy 7. Don't, don't you start on Kingdom or, Hearts 3. Or Shenmue 3. <laughs> <laughs> like, all, all of those are like the big four that could really surge Sony into the next wave right. with uh, the full head of steam. Right. So you um, obviously have played, I would assume, all of the Metal Gear games at this point? Um, the ones that I didn't play, I didn't play Portable Ops, but okay. Kojima has, has said that he didn't directly direct that one. Right. So he doesn't consider it lore. So I'm like, ah, not missing out. I uh, didn't play that. I uh, did not play Metal Gear uh, or Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. Just watched overviews of them. Gotcha. Also, that was kind of like passed by time, so it's it's hard to go back yeah. and revisit. Um, there's a great uh, meme from, like, uh, do you ever watch Deadpool 1? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's, it was uh, uh, 
uh, what's his face character from Silicon Valley. He's like, motherfucker, you are hard to look at. <laughs> and that's what I <laughs> that's what I think about when that's I. That's how see. you treat Metal Gear One and Two. And that's also how I treat Final Fantasy Seven. That's funny. <laughs> but, yeah, right. Whenever that remake will happen. So. Yeah, whenever. Um, but yeah, I uh, I often wonder um, how all of it's connected, and I'm curious to find out, in some regard what that really means for Kojima, what it means for Konami, what it means for the Metal Gear IP. What I'm driving at here in this talk, ladies and gentlemen, is I believe that Death Stranding and poor Metal Gear Survive, let's not call it poor Metal Gear Survive, it was was what it was. The scapegoat. The scapegoat, yes. Um, Going back to PT in 2014, back to Metal Gear Solid 5 in 2015, um, I think that they're all connected. Now, tell me what you think about this in the comments below, but Ryan and I talked about this a little bit on the way over here, and I kind of set him up in terms of where I want this conversation to go. And I think that this is the biggest ruse in history, not just not just Phantom Pain being revealed as you playing the medic, and it's kind of big bosses double and all that sort of stuff, and PT being canceled. I think all of this has purpose, and I think all of it has meaning, and I think it's to basically dupe the biggest audience in in video gaming history to believing that something happened when it didn't. Um, I think the Konami fiasco, to be completely honest, is bullshit. Um, I think it's all part of this bigger conundrum machine that is working in a social media aspect to be able to trick you to believe that, you know, Konami was such a bad company and blah, blah, blah. I don't know the internal workings of Konami. I don't know anybody who works for them, so I can't speak directly or indirectly on that. I just know what I know from the press and the media. And as we know, press and media has taken a little bit of a stumble, um, really, in the last five years, because we can't discern what is real, what's fake. And we do a much better job of being educated humans to filter through that shit. But at the same time, I think this whole Death Stranding... And, and, and Kojima thing is a direct relation to news, media, all this sort of stuff, how it's going to play into social media. And to be honest with you guys, it could even be another Metal Gear game. Now, I don't even know. Wow, you're going to go crazy. But I think that Death Stranding has ties to the Metal Gear series. Um, what do you think, man? Yeah, so this, uh, I hadn't thought about it before we started this conversation. But yeah, if this ends up being... I guess working title Metal Gear Solid Zero. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna, yeah. We're gonna jump right in. Right. Um, I was saying like uh, two titles that I would love to see kind of ported into the Metal Gear universe or expanded upon. Um, I would love to see the actual adventures of Big Boss during the events of Metal Gear One, where yeah. Venom Snake is off like doing his clone bullshit. Right. And then you actually see uh, Mother Base getting constructed and things like that, or not Mother Base. Uh, what was it? Zanzibar? Zanzibar. Yeah. Or uh, Shadow Moses. So seeing that happen, or I thought the boss, uh, the original one, was a really polarizing character to see her um, storyline and how she uh, created Cobra Unit or how that was given to her or whatnot right. uh, would be really fascinating. Kind of the mother of the whole series. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, it would, if they wanted to, to like really bookend the series, I think that would be a strong way to do it because uh, I don't really think there's much desire or at least for myself, for a, a game past uh, chronologically in Metal Gear Solid 4. <laughs> yeah, they did a good job of having that be a Solid Snake's yeah. song, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, I'm like... More of a movie than a game, but that's okay. Yeah, I was like, oh, we're kind of done with that. I, yeah. I don't want to... Like, I guess if it was a Metal Gear Solid 5 chronologically, like right after that, it's like, is it just a full movie instead of less of a movie? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would like to see them take a step back. And and the boss, I think, is, is a really fresh start that doesn't have inherent na- like ties to the name Snake. Exactly. Um, and also, it would give us an opportunity to explore uh, characters like the Sorrow, who, in my mind, is like the best boss battle of of the entire series. I and, think so too. And actually, the entire series, it's like that or or Psycho Mantis. Yeah, <laughs> P- plugging your controller in from one to two, yeah, reading the memory card, yeah, talking secrets. about Konami games. Yeah, like, yeah, it's all really cool. Dude, it's all really stop. Cool. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, w- I would like to see them st- take a step back, and I think there are enough breadcrumbs if you pay close attention to, mm. to see that there's a potential connection there. And if, if they want to one-up themselves and, and have, like, 
how they did Moby Dick Studios with Metal Gear Solid V, and how that was originally casted out as just the Phantom Pain, and you can see like the little outlines in the, the Phantom Pain. title. Yeah, in the yeah. Phantom Pain logo. It's like, all right, maybe they're doing something like this on a grander scale that not only dupes gamers, but also accurately reflects uh, that of what's going on in our current political climate with like, we're going to throw all this fake cool shit at you right now yep. and see if you can weather that storm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it would, man, maybe maybe be his, his greatest trick. Because uh, yeah. because uh, I felt like Metal Gear Solid Five was just an entire trick. You you wanted the boss and you you got a different boss. Yeah, you did. <laughs> but but and at the very end, you see him like when he breaks that mirror and then he just like he like smirks like like you duped me, but I'm going to do something with with what I've been given. Yeah. And then yeah, he eventually goes and becomes like the Venom Snake and faces toe to toe with with our uh, Solid Snake. Which yep. man, I wish we could have saw that. Some, some, maybe, maybe like I was saying, you know, like he walks into the doorway. Maybe you see the bandana. May, I don't know. Maybe a shadow of Solid Snake at the end of Phantom Pain. But yeah. that's also, you know, uh, fan fiction and it writes itself. But yeah, I, I wish we could have got like like helicopter smoke, and then when the, the the dust blows over, you just see Solid like on the ground, right, and his, in his pr- like prone yeah. down position or whatever. Yeah, that would have been really. Or cool. even like the the intro to. Um, uh, Ground Zeroes was an homage. Like, yes, yes, like, it was. Yeah, like the kept you waiting, and then he lifts up the goggles. Yeah, like, all right, just, just do it again. <laughs> so not hearing obviously David Hayter's voice and the choice that they made with that all the way through that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, with the medic and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, we're all like, up in arms about that bullshit, and it's like, guys, just let the game play yeah, out. Understand yeah. what you know. There is a bigger plan to this whole yeah. thing. But like, let it play itself, and also. It's, it's not Snake. Exactly, <laughs> it's yeah. It's not Snake, so this guy's going to be a little bit different. He might understand his purpose in a similar way to that of Big Boss, but he might not have the same like vocal tendencies and things like that. Right. Um, yeah, I, I would love to see some sort of expansion on that. Um, maybe maybe some some brief epilogue of getting like confirmation of how Kaz Miller dies mm. at the hands of Liquid, because he, he was my favorite character coming out of 5. Yep. And I just... He was a character that having not uh, fully like played Peace Walker and only like kind of watched it, mm-hmm. um, he really resonated with me. Kaz Miller was a fantastic character that, oh, yeah. that was uh, kind of the yin to, to Ocelot's Yang. Oh, yeah. And how they ended up like, they, they, they played it out for you. It's like, hey, if, if this happens, we're going to be on opposing sides, and I hope you understand that that's how it plays out. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned something earlier, uh, breadcrumbs. And yeah. Kojima loves to leave them from the nuclear disarmament for you know everyone having zero nukes across all the platforms from PC to Xbox to PlayStation. Um, I think that's what this talk is really about is those breadcrumbs that he does leave. And I'll dive really deep down a rabbit hole here and hope you guys join me where I'm going. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about PT. I'm going to talk a little bit it's how it's connected to, I believe, Death Stranding and how I think the Metal Gear universe, even in Metal Gear Solid Five started to show us that there is so much more going on to this world than maybe the average you know consumer or fan even understands and can even like process through with all the bullshit that you see and and and, and experience and um where i'm going with this is i truly believe like i said earlier that death stranding is connected to all of this in some way shape or form um i believe that what Kojima has done is basically set a lot of different breadcrumbs out through all his different games, whether it be through his Twitter account, whether it be through um, not being invited to the Game Award, Jeff Keighley's Game Awards, and and having Jeff Keighley on his side for everything and all that sort of stuff. And also all all of the Konami employees, like, leaving, but they all happen to be a part of Kojima Studios? Yes, yes, yeah, the the ones that he's poached from Konami at this point. What I'm saying is that I genuinely believe that because Death Stranding's main theme is connections, they talk about how we've always had the stick and the rope. Well, we've always used the stick to beat off the enemies and to, <laughs> that sounds really bad, but to uh, fend off the enemies and to fight them off in some regard, but we never see the rope. We never see them making connections with either your antagonist or people that you don't even know or, res- or care about or whatever it may be. And I think that's what this is doing. I think that seeds were planted way back long ago um from lisa to the 204863 coordinates let's call them in pt that get basically blurted out at you while you're going through the multiple loop hallway which may or may not exist um i think that 
there's a lot of charm to talking about this lore. And I think that, for me as a fan, it puts a smile on my face. Oh, yeah. Um, there's a specific instance in PT where there's a Swedish radio transmission. And if you translate it to English, um, it talks about the event that happened 75 years ago. Now, PT came out in 2014. So if you go back 75 years from 2014, that puts you in 1939, which happens to be the year my father was born. That's really cool, but that's beside the point. Um, and Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. Father. Yeah, Metal Gear Solid, Frank Lee McCary. No, um, <laughs> no so... Uh, it's an alternate game cover. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> What's this Italian doing on the cover? Anyway, but... Um, anyway, so 75 years from 2014 puts you in 1939. And 1939 was the radio transmission of the Blood Worlds. So where am I going with this? I think, now, kill me in the comments below, but I believe that Death Stranding is in the Metal Gear universe, and I believe that some entity has come down in the Metal Gear universe to basically mask over what society is. We don't know as a society that this is happening. It's all in the background. Um, very much a mask before our eyes. And I think that it's connected to why there's these alien creatures, why even if you look in Metal Gear Survive in some YouTube users' videos, um, I'll mention them in the comments below, but like Python Selkin and a few others as well too, have kind of talked about these floating creatures in Metal Gear Survive that are in the sky, but the sky also looks translucent like water, which if you've seen any Death Stranding trailers, there's a lot of water. It talks about, um, Kojima talks about how when you die, quote unquote, you don't really die, but you're sent to this like underwater purgatory. And that's where Norman Reedus, or your, your character walks around in first person and gathers all the things that they've lost. And then you go back into the world. I think that, I think that Norman Reedus might be a character that we don't know in the Metal Gear series. Um, I think that, I'm going to say it, I think Mads Mikkelsen is tied to the Metal Gear series in the way of the sorrow, and based on the casting that just happened, um, oh, the actress's name is escaping me, um, but she looks like a spitting image of every single rendering they've had of the boss. So, where am I going with this? We see a baby, we see the sorrow, maybe potentially as Mads Mikkelsen's characters with all of his gestures and all of his um, supernatural ways, and then we have the boss basically being cast in this Death Stranding world. I think that Ocelot is alive, and I think that Ocelot is that baby that um, Norman is carrying around, also Guillermo del Toro's character is carrying around inside like the incubator and whatever and whatnot. I've thrown a lot at you guys. What do you think? No, I think it all makes a lot of sense. I'm just wondering, is it... Do you think it'll be like the like a full-blown Metal Gear Death Stranding? That's a good question. Or, or is it going to be like, hey, this is all connected, but like very little? Like, it, are, are they going to go all out? Because I, I don't see them creating an entire standalone game of Metal Gear Survive, have it like basically tank in sales, right? Um, throw throw their precious IP of uh, Silent Hills under the bus for the most part, right? Um, in order to fuel Metal Gear, like do you, do you think that's what they're doing? I think that that's I think that that's hard to swallow, and I think that the latter part of what you said in terms of it being very loosely tied to it, like they may not, if it is loosely tied, they may not mention the Sorrow's name, they might mention the boss's name, they may not mention Ocelot, it may just be more implied. Um, but even still, wouldn't that be fucking badass? Like, the, I... like the biggest, like, this, it's, it would be the biggest, like, we got you audience, like, it's unbelievable. Like, we fucking duped you to the fullest extent, for starting with Metal Gear Solid Five and how it's not the new number five, like the numeral five, but like a V logo, it splits off. What does it split off into? What does that mean? Yeah. That could just mean, that could mean, you know, the medic and big boss. That could mean like a parallel dimension opens up. It could mean a bunch of shit. Well, that it, and like uh, the act of the phantom pain itself, like feeling pain for something that isn't there anymore and the absence of big boss and like like uh, players like viscerally re reacting to that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I have a question. Um, yeah. Was the boss's name ever revealed? 
or do we ever own it from her? That's oh, the question. I feel like a bad Metal Gear fan right now. Right. Because if it's not, then you could just she can go as whatever name that she wants. Right. That. And what if it just like you play it out as whatever sort of game, and at the very end, that's the title. Like you get the name, like her yeah. becoming the boss. It's like oh, and then it suddenly clicks. Yeah. Because uh-huh. the sorrow. He probably is not known as the sorrow to her. Right, of course not. Yeah, that would be a weird yeah. husband-wife dynamic. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Seems Hi, weird. I'm the sorrow. Nice to meet you. <laughs> like, yeah, that, that seems a little bizarre. Yeah, I mean, there, there was a, a strange love, so it seemed weirder. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> there, the, some of the names in the universe are uh, a little far. Isn't that a play, play off of uh, Dr. Nerd Love? Or who is it? I, I feel like that, that name has some sort of, like, uh, cultural mm-hmm. reverence. Cultural real world connection. Yeah. Yeah. There's that uh, word again, connections. Yeah. Well, um, I don't know. Um, no, I, I think it would have to be big. Um, yeah, so you, you think the fir- you think the first, not necessarily loosely tied, you think it's like, here we go. I, I think it's Metal full, Gear. Full on, like. Yeah, uh, just because, like, there's too much at stake in terms of, like, the, the risks that they've taken. Like, they're willing to, to smear Metal Gear's name in order to, to bring it up. Yeah. Like, with Survive, because Survive is not, uh, I imagine, what a lot of folks wanted. And they wanted PT, and they didn't give that to them. Right. So yeah, I, I would. Oh man, yeah, I'd be willing to say that like PT is, if anything, like a hallucination of what Norman Reedus's character is experiencing. I'll even go as far as to say that what if everything we've experienced up to this point as Metal Gear fans could be this hallucination, maybe implemented by these aliens that we don't even fucking know. Like who who knows how far down the rabbit hole this shit goes? Yeah, it could be, and oof, man. If it does connect everything, that's going to be a long cutscene. Think about think about um, back to Ground Zeroes. Think about like the different missions that you could actually select. Even the main one, a pseudo historical rep, uh, re, re what was it? like it says a pseudo historical like recreation. Mm-hmm. And at the beginning of every single mission, that those little title screens come up. It says a pseudo historical recreation. What the fuck does that mean? Yeah, that that sounds more like like Metal Gear Solid VR missions to me. Like, there's just something weird about that. I mean, we experienced that in, you know, Metal Gear Solid 2, exactly. Full-heartedly. The the entirety of 2. The entirety of 2, yeah, exactly. Um, Gosh, yeah. Tell me again what you guys think in the comments below. Um, Actually, off to to our left here, we uh, have our TD and and director working for us today. And Chris 4, what do you think? You've played a little bit of Metal Gear. Um, What do you think about all this? Everything that we've heard so far. Like... What, what's your take on all this fucking craziness? I think I need to play some Metal Gear games is what I think. <laughs> right? Um, yeah, I Good answer. A, I played a little bit of the first one, and I watched probably the last 50% of three, and I found it fascinating. Right. Uh, so I'm fo- following reasonably well uh, for somebody who knows very little about the series. If there were ever anybody in this industry who could pull something off as... Looney Tunes insane as this, I think it would be Hideo Kojima. Yeah. I think that if anybody, even if he's not working in concert with Konami, if there were ever anybody who would say, fuck you, this is still my baby, this came from my brain, and I am going to continue to add to this universe in any way that I can. Even though he said he's done with it so many times. Yes, right. it would be him. Yeah. And why not? Yeah. Why not? If you've got if you've got the brain power for it and all these you know, I've watched all the Death, Star- Death Stranding coverage and these things you're talking about, you know, having watched the the sequence with the sorrow in Metal Gear Solid 3, he's using the same Mads Mickelson is using a lot of the same gesture or very similar gestures. Yeah. And I mean, I suppose it could be coincidence, sure. A coincidence yeah. or an, an over specific director. But when has anything <laughs> ever been a coincidence in any of his games. Exactly. Like, what what exactly. if everything's not been connected in a game that he says the theme of which is connection or the images of people thought they saw, saw Psycho Mantis in the clouds in the, the latest Death Stranding trailer. Right. right. Um, yeah, I want to I wanna add on that just a quick bit. Like, uh, if if this is a, an actual like standalone title that is a separation from Konami and it's not like done under them, mm-hmm. the boss is just a generic name a yeah. word yeah so you can he he can craft a standalone game that players can piece together like oh this is what he wants us to connect right. together like even if it doesn't specific if, if it's not named metal gear but when you have the ability to to make a game that's crafted far back enough to where you don't need 
those 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 solid snakes, those liquid snakes, to, to reference each other. Yep. I think it's it could still work. I I would love for them to just be like ah, gotcha. Yeah. We're all together. But if it's not, he's still gonna get us. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like with who is it gonna be with Konami or with Del Toro or with exactly. anybody? He, he wins no matter what. Exactly. So and we might not. We might not. <laughs> Depending on what we want. Well, let's in in terms of fandom, yeah. I would say that Metal Gear fans, based on the public eye, have quote unquote lost for the last couple of years. Yeah. People were pissed about Phantom Pain. Okay. I I thoroughly enjoyed Phantom Pain. I know you did too. I oh, yeah. It's, it's my favorite. It it, it, it it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. It, bingo. Yeah. And the controller and everything. Unless I yeah. I just really like Peace Walker. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but I think that. Overall, this is to some degree what has to be happening. Yeah, it's it's almost as if he wants to focus on a specific facet or an idea with each title, and it's all like masked in the story of a particular snake. Um, if if the story of, of uh, Sons of Liberty was this idea of like uh, reconnaissance or the the dissemination of information and just like trusting and not trusting certain uh, pieces of information like what was what was then the 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 point of uh, the phantom pain was it uh, identity right yeah right and I, I feel like each one of these games you can really or, or race or whatever right yeah, you like, can boil it down to a specific facet so and then you, you dial it back to death stranding and I, I feel like it would be dumb not to be a continuation of one very specific ideal that yeah. he wants to hammer down yeah I totally agree um, there's another little Easter egg that's in PT. And like I said, I'm going to keep referencing that at least for the duration of this because I think that's the glue that kind of holds this whole thing together is there's a number that's revealed. It's 204863. Now, if you take that in whatever way you will, but you actually plug it into coordinates, um, 204863 is actually the Icelandic beaches, like those black sand beaches that you see in the Death Stranding trailer. So it's like, you know, how is this shit not actually connected? I mean, if you if you take and you just take away little bits of information here and there, and and if it's not, is it is it for the greater good of like, is he just trolling us? It's like, no, fuck it, this is not connected at all. Yeah, I'm just I'm just doing this. I'm leaving these breadcrumbs to lead you to an abyss or to a wormhole or you know, like fucking who knows? Exactly. It's interesting. Yeah, I'm wondering uh, if he if he just like really doesn't care about like we don't care about sales. We want to leave a mark on the gaming industry that isn't uh, upheld by the amount of units made. Right. Like, like we want it on like like impact and word of mouth and like is this game going to be talked out to talked about for years to come yeah. and is the saga going to live on and I think that is much more important to him. I agree. Yeah. Everlasting. Guys, once again, tell us what you think in the comments below. Um, I think it's nuttier than hell. I'm on board. Even if it isn't connected, who gives a shit? I'm a fan for life. Ryan, do you agree? Oh, yes. Yeah. And thanks again for sticking with us. Hey there, all of us community. You could be anywhere on the internet right now, and you're here with us. For that, we thank you. Don't forget to share these videos with your friends, like, and subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next time.